All of this was shot on my cell phone. Stick around, I'll show you how to do it. G'day guys, Shane Austin here. I bring you two videos each and every week all about small sensor photography. So if you're new to the channel and you like that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and if you've already done that, you're a bloody legend. Today what we're talking about is night-lapse photography. It's like time-lapse photography, but with the stars. We're going to cover it with Android and with iOS. Let's get into it. If you don't know what time-lapse photography is, basically it's shooting frames slower than what your eye would normally see them, so it almost looks like a stop-motion sort of a video. Almost every new modern smartphone has this functionality. In the menu, you can shoot time-lapse, hyperlapse, all that sort of stuff. They basically do the same thing. So every phone that exists right now, pretty much every phone, you can do this straight out of the bat. And well, it works reasonably well, but it doesn't work well for night-lapse. It doesn't work well in most cases for nighttime time-lapses. All right, first up, iOS. How do we do this with an iPhone? You've got two options. If you've got an iPhone 12, you can just shoot it in time-lapse mode, regular time-lapse mode. Apple will, in, well, it's not that intuitive to be honest. What they do is they automatically change that time-lapse to a night-lapse. So you set your phone up on a tripod, point it to where you want to put it, and hit time-lapse. And what it will do will just start creating a time-lapse. As it gets darker, or even if it is dark, it will just create a night-lapse for you. It just increases the ISO, and you've got an output of a video at the end of it. The thing you need to remember though, with iPhone and using the time-lapse functionality on the iPhone, on the native camera app, the longer you shoot, the more frames it's going to drop out of that video. So you could shoot uh, an all-night sort of time-lapse and end up with a 30-second video. And that may not be as well done as you would like it to be. The second option for iOS users is the Nightcap app. In the Nightcap app, it's a very powerful tool for the iOS. So this is good for iPhone 12 and beyond, or before earlier, earlier, and download Nightcap app, and it's got a heap of functions that you can do on this, and one of those is night-lapse or time-lapse photography, and you get the option to adjust the ISO, the shutter speed, the intervals, all that sort of stuff, and it gives you, in my opinion, a better output than what you can with the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro, etc., in regular time-lapse mode. It's a dead set easy app to use. I'll link up the top here to a playlist all about Nightcap app. Dead set, easy to use. The downside of both of these is that it outputs video. And you may wonder why having video as the output is a downside. Well, you may have something happen in that video in one of those frames that's really bright. You might have a spotlight that comes on in front of you, cars that pass that you don't want in the video. And if you're shooting just single frames and taking those, then you can take those frames out of the time lapse and you probably won't even notice it. But with a video, it's going to be in there and you can't do much about it. That's how you do it with your iPhone. But what if we could get a photo like this and pass those stars through the sky in a video? Well, with the Galaxy S21 Ultra, that's what we're gonna do. So basically the way that we're going to do this is take this sort of photo many times over the course of the evening and put it all together in a video in software on the computer. First thing we need to work out though is, well, I don't wanna be there all bloody night pushing that shutter button. So what we're gonna need is an intervalometer to put on the phone to do that button pushing for us. So what you need to do is head over to the Google Play Store, download this app, I'll link it down the bottom, and basically what that's going to do is hit the shutter button for us. So we'll open up the app and then we'll configure this. So we'll go into then the camera app on the phone, go to pro mode, set up the ISO, set up the shutter speed, all that sort of business. Here are the settings that I used. Go back into the app and then set up the parameters that you want to hit that shutter button. So you're going to hit the timer. That's the timer when you hit the start button, it's going to give you a time before it takes the first shot, and that's it. Then you're gonna hit the, the uh, number of shots that you want. In this case here, I'm just hitting 3,000. You can hit as many as you want. That's how many photos you'll end up with at the end of the sequence. And then the interval is how long between each set of photos is taken. So if you're taking a 30 second photo, what I will generally do is leave a 30 second gap after that, let the camera cool down, so forth, and it'll give you more range in the night. It'll just look better. That's what I find anyway. You can play with those settings as much as you want. That's just the way I set it up. 
So I let this shoot last night between two and three hours. I ended up with about 400 photos. Those 400 photos I put straight onto the computer, bring them into Adobe Lightroom, edit the first photo, go to the last photo, apply the same edit. If it looks okay, I'll select a lot of their photos and synchronize all the edits that I've done to that. That will save me editing 400 odd photos. Once they're all done, I'll export them out of Lightroom and get ready to bring them into Final Cut Pro. Once I bring them into Final Cut Pro, I'll bring in 400 photos all at the same time. I'll select a lot of those photos, change the duration of that by hitting Control D and bring it down to two seconds. Put all that together now as a, as a new compound clip. With like most things with Apple and iPhones, it's easy to use, but it's not as um, adaptable. It's not as um, adjustable later. With Android stuff, well, it's usually a little bit harder to do, but you usually end up with a better product like this. A couple of things you need to be mindful of this. One, it's going to be out there probably all night, so don't leave your phone and gear somewhere that someone's gonna knock it off on you. You'll be pretty gutted in the morning. Second thing is you're going to need a tripod and you're probably going to need a power bank as well. So I've set up a power bank, hooked the power cord straight into the phone, and when I'm done in the morning, I've taken all these photos and the battery's still good on the phone. You don't need to use Final Cut Pro. There is so much editing software for videos, and that's what this is, video editing software. There is so much out there that's free DaVinci Resolve, all those sorts of stuff. And the principle is exactly the same. Bring all of them in, shorten the file to one or two seconds, the frame to one or two seconds, and put it all together and create a new clip. And there you've got your night lapse. It's pretty cool, huh? Now that's great. The way that I do it with the Samsung device is just exactly the same way that I would do it with my DSLR full frame camera. I would set up, take a series of photos with a mechanical involometer, bring them into Lightroom, adjust them exactly as I've just shown you there, bring them into Final Cut Pro and make that time lapse. It's pretty cool. And I've got to tell you, the, the camera that's on this Samsung, it's fantastic for doing this sort of thing. It's just so simple to use. Now that I've got these 400 odd photos, well, you may have seen this sequence at the beginning of the video. And you're wondering, how the hell did you do that? Well, what we're gonna do now is show you how to do that. So you've got 400 odd photos of stars moving through the sky. This is the way that we used to do it way back in the day to do star trails. And the software that I use for star trails is a program called Star Stacks. I'll link it down the bottom. You can use it on Mac and you can use it on Windows and it's free. It's pretty bloody good. You bring the photos in, let the uh, program go through and analyze the photos and prepare the photos. And as it's building the star trails, this is what you see. And all I've done there is capture the screen as it's doing it and present it to you guys in the video. It's pretty bloody good software. So if you're not happy with what your phone is doing as far as star trails go, this stuff's been around for a long time, quite a while, it's free and it's ready to go right now. So it's technically not time-lapse photography, that last little bit, that's just star trails. But look, you've got 400 odd photos, you might even have a couple of thousand, might have three or 4,000. Seems like a waste if you only use them for one little project. That's it for me today, guys. I'll catch you on Friday. See you later.